This is Rob Schneider. If you're unfamiliar, he was pretty famous for his roles in a lot of Adam Sandler movies. It seems like he was kind of part of Adam Sandler's posse, if you will. He played in Waterboy. He was on Saturday Night Live with Adam Sandler and other people. He was really well known for a while. An incredibly famous actor in his own right. He was also in Home Alone 2 with Donald Trump, as a matter of fact. He voted for Donald Trump and is now a full-blown conspiracy theorist. So let's listen to this guy talk about his friendship with Donald Trump, or his interactions, I guess, with Donald Trump. He, that's what he's about to touch on. And while we listen, we're going to play some Breath of the Wild, too. I won't give you any spoilers. I'm just kind of going around grinding stuff. <laughs> what was that? Uh, somebody yelled something. Hold on. Oh, you can do it. Okay, he said, you can do it. That's one of his famous phrases from uh, one of his movies with Adam Sandler. I don't remember which movie, but Happy Gilmore? May have been Happy Gilmore. Yeah, he was really close with Adam Sandler. So, anyways, yeah, that, that was funny. For 25 years, I rang that. Thank you, Adam Sandler. Guy, he's probably sick of hearing people say that to him. You can do it. That's like his big catchphrase. I love it. I love it too. But we fucked up with this. Thank you. Um, I'm a traditional liberal, which makes me a right wing fascist now. He's not a traditional liberal at all. He's he is actually a right wing extremist. That's the correct word. Like he is completely unglued from reality. Completely. There is nothing left in this guy's head except for right-wing extremist propaganda, plain and simple. It does, automatically. You know, if you're for things like, you know, free speech or, you know, women's rights. No, he's not in favor of those things. If he was in favor of those things, then he wouldn't have a problem with trans people just living their lives the way that they want to live their lives, plain and simple. No one is coming after women's rights, except for the right. Seriously, trying to end no-fault divorce? That's like their new thing that they're focused on? Really? You're in favor of women's rights? Equal rights. Don't judge a person by the color of their skin. Now they want you to judge somebody by the color of their skin. You know? If you're white, you're automatically racist. Yeah, there's the old KKK talking point coming out that we talked about a minute ago. No, this is, this is a fabrication of your own imagination, Rob. This is not something that's a problem in society, okay? You know, it's like, what? Yeah, you're, you're white, you're racist, really? No, no, that's false. Now, every single person, black people included, have racial biases that exist in the background that you have to work to overcome. Everybody, every single person, I see this especially prominently in New York City, there is a lot of racism against people of all ethnicities because white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, wasps as they say, white people really are not the majority in New York City. Jewish people are kind of, I, I guess you could say that they're white passing. They look white. So if you're counting Jewish people as like white, then yeah, I guess white people are the majority. But I'm talking like white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. Specifically, not a member of a minority group, really. And uh, so if you're not counting the Jewish community as one of the wasps, like I'm from that background of white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, even though I'm not religious or whatever. That's like the background that I come from. If you're just counting those people, then they are definitely a minority. And you'll find that I think th uh, the Upper East Side of Manhattan, at the very least, is like 40 or 52 percent like Jewish or somewhere in there. I forget what the percentage is. Very, very high. And there are different neighborhoods that are controlled by different ethnicities. You know, um, there are neighborhoods controlled by like Italians, neighborhoods controlled by Jews, by uh, Greeks, by Chinese. And there's a lot of racism between the different races here. Uh, like black people and Asian people tend to have a big problem with each other. They do not get along at all. You know, there are, is a variety of different types of racism in this area. Racism 
is something that permeates society at all levels, all societies. But for the record, I don't know if you were aware of this or not. I discovered this not too long ago. Prejudice is learned, not born in, not innate. It's not something that you automatically do unless you're taught to be prejudiced against somebody. It's a learned trait. Unfortunately, pretty much every ethnicity out there has learned to be prejudiced against somebody, against some group. We have to fight it. We have to battle this stuff. We cannot, we cannot let prejudice and hate win at the end of the day. This guy seems in favor of it. So anyway, if you're white, there is racism inherent in your mindset, yes. If you're black, there's racism inherent in your mindset. If you're Asian, if you're Italian, if you're whatever, that's part of the deal. That's part of human culture right now, unfortunately. I don't feel racist. Well, yeah, because you're, that's how fucking racist you are. You don't feel racist. If you're not aware that those biases exist, then you're going to live your life causing all kinds of problems for all kinds of people, including but not limited to yourself. <laughs> Check out this asshole, not realizing how racist he is. I'm half white and half Asian, trying to figure out which part of me is discriminating against the other part. Well, he's white passing. Um, I would venture to guess that He's probably, he probably grew up in a more kind of white culture than an Asian culture, and as a result, is probably a little bit more racist against the types of people that white people tend to be racist against. White people don't tend to naturally be racist against Asian people. Oh, there's a little bit there, but there is a large undercurrent of racism against the black community, because... There has, uh, because we have a history as a country in the United States of systemically oppressing black people, of enslaving black people. So anyways, yeah, if he were asking seriously, which it doesn't seem like he is, but if he were, I would say he's probably more racist against Asian people. My Asian, impossible, 100%. <laughs> Playing into, uh, racist tropes about Asians being tiny. I don't know. Yeah, it, it just wasn't really a funny joke to me. Not that I'm, like, offended by any of this. I just think it was kind of stupid. But, okay. 100%. But my b kind of white. They look kind of white, you know? Raul. <laughs> I don't know what a Filipino name is. Wait, is he is he from the Philippines? Is that the joke? Because I thought Raul was like a Latin American name, not a Filipino name. I feel like we don't have enough background on this guy to understand the joke he just told. We can cut that <laughs> Listen, hey, look, it's just, it's going to take compassion. It's going to take compassion, you know? I mean, it's not easy being a liberal. It's not. He's still claiming that he's a traditional liberal. No, he's not. He's a right-wing extremist. It's sad. <laughs> you see them alone in their cars with their masks on. Okay, he's stereotyping, I guess, and making a joke that all people to the left of hunting the homeless for sport wear masks in their cars alone, okay. Like, why do you care even? I don't understand why you even give a shit if somebody wears a mask, if they wanna wear a mask. Like, you know, sometimes I would wear a mask in my car if I was just driving from like the post office to the grocery store and it was just too much of a pain to take it off. I didn't care and then put it back on again, right? Because sometimes, you know, when you're wearing a mask on occasion, that mask doesn't really fit correctly and it fogs your glasses up. And sometimes you get it tucked under your glasses with that little metal, you know, pin positioned exactly right so it doesn't fog up your glasses anymore. And you just like, if you move the mask, you know it's going to fog your glasses for the rest of the day so you don't want to move it. So yeah, sure, I would wear my mask in my car sometimes. Why does Rob care? 
He cares because he's a right wing extremist and he doesn't want anybody wearing masks ever, even though they saved people's lives. Now we know, of course, that masks at this moment in time aren't really useful now. But it was perfectly 100 percent reasonable to wear them when COVID started. At this point, the permeability is too high for the virus and, and the mask is not strong enough to prevent the virus from getting through. So it's kind of a lost cause to wear a mask to prevent COVID from spreading, for the most part, at this point. But when COVID started, it was perfectly reasonable to wear a mask. According to the National Institute of Health, three million lives were saved by lockdowns, which, that's in the United States, I believe, which, by the way, we didn't even have a federal lockdown. It was only state by state, and three million lives were saved. And mask usage saved 87,000 lives, so three million compared to 87,000. Not that much compared to what lockdowns saved, but you know what? If one person survives that wouldn't have otherwise it seems like it's worth it to me right anyway but go ahead tell me more about how you're being persecuted for wearing a mask and all that other garbage i don't want to give covid to myself <laughs> hey you in the other car my mask only works when you're wearing <laughs> Well, masks only prevented the spread if you had COVID. So the, the mask wearer had to have COVID. So if Rob Schneider had COVID and was wandering around not wearing a mask, then it's, you know, it's not helping anybody else, basically. <laughs> I've, got, I've got nothing against masks, seriously. I mean, for Obviously. Some people, it was the best thing that ever happened for two fucking years. Seriously. Seriously. You know who I'm talking about. People with really sexy eyes, but a fucked up grill. You know, you know. <laughs> fair enough. Yep, that's fair enough. What? Huh? I'll put the mask back on so you can. Yeah, no brown. No, go on. Okay, it was a funny joke, and then he killed it. Um, it was, you know, <laughs> it started out good. I got to give him that. It did start out funny. I'm right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'll look back at you, but I'll keep the mask on. <laughs> good one. <laughs> I knew this country was in trouble when I went to a bank. And the guard at the bank was like, excuse me, sir, you're in a bank. You have to wear a mask. Yeah, that was a that was a bizarre experience. You know, when I lived in Florida, like I said, I worked above a bank and my buddy uh, that worked with me, his name was Chris. He got a brand new hoodie that would zip all the way up and it had Darth Darth Vader's face on it, like Darth Vader's mask, you know, on the, the front. And it was brand new, and he's super excited to show it off, so he zips it all the way up, and then he gets in the elevator and goes upstairs to second floor where I worked to show everybody. And all the bank workers saw was a guy wearing a full mask walking toward the bank. This is probably 2014 when this happened. So they hit the panic button, you know, SWAT team shows up, police show up, everybody. And they're like freaking out like, oh, my God, there's a robber on his way and everything. But he's just trying to show us his cool uh, Darth Vader mask, you know. And, it, you know, it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't a big deal. They didn't care. Like, OK, yeah, just don't do that again. And instead of just saying, I apologize, I promise I won't do it again. The guy threw a fit and started yelling and saying they were idiots and all kinds of stuff, they were probably going to let him go until he started acting like a jackass, and then they arrested his ass and threw him in jail for the day. So here's the lesson. Be nice to cops. Even if it's not warranted, even if they've been a D-bag to you, just be nice, okay? 
because they have a disproportionate amount of control over the situation and it, you know they have the ability to make your life miserable so anyways um it was a surreal experience for sure walking into a bank with a mask on especially with how panic button happy those bank workers are it's crazy Well, you guys did a whole 180 on that motherfucker, didn't you? <laughs> the last hundred years, you wore a mask in the bank. You were the bad guy. <laughs> all right, here you go. All right, give me all your fucking money. Let's go. Let's fucking put it up. This was going to be a deposit. Now it's a robbery. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I got winded just doing that. I'm so fucking out of shape. But I was in uh, Los Angeles last summer, and they still had the mask thing in stores, you know. And so I walked in. Right, so you're supposed to wear masks in stores, what he's saying, okay. And usually, you know, I wear my mask this way, because most of my germs come out my chin, you know, just so I don't <laughs> So I walked into a store, and there was somebody working, which is great, you know, anybody working anywhere, you know. And, and <laughs> you're just happy, like, oh, fuck, it's open, shit, all right. You know? Yeah, a lot of things closed. Fair enough. So anyway, I walked in and, you know, she's just doing her job. You can't get mad, but she came up to me and said, Excuse me, sir, I need to put your mask on. Sir, I need to put your, sir, I need to put your mask on. It's a little aggressive, but, you know, she's just doing her job, you know. But then she added these two words. Sir, I need to put your mask on for me, for me, for me. And I was like, oh, for you. <laughs> okay show me your <laughs> I'm sorry what how does that relate to anything how does that connect I don't understand I feel like it would be a f funny joke if it made any sense at all uh, you know no, no, it wouldn't really be a funny joke probably but okay for me for me for me We're all in this together. <laughs> I'll put the mask on you. Let me see those floppy things under your sweater. We're all in that. We're all. Everybody wins. Every I don't understand. What's the joke? He, he's just being uh, like a, a sexist pig. Is that the joke? I, I'm doing my best to understand here, honestly. Buddy. The fuck, we're all in this together. We're not all in this together. I'm sorry. I want you to do good. We're not all in this together. I'm sorry, but like when I moved, you know, last year, none of you fuckers showed up to help me with the couch or anything. <laughs> you didn't. Why? Because we're not all in this together. You're well, we're not all in your move together, but we're all in a pandemic together. Yes, we are. We're all dealing with this pandemic at the same time together, and it's miserable for all of us, okay? There, it, it's nobody's fault. Pandemics happen in human history. There have been tons and tons of pandemics. And when they come along, we have to deal with it. That's part of being human. That's part of living in a society. We are all in this together. And your stupid ass refuses to take the most basic step, the most basic step of not going around in public without a mask on for a little while is all it took. Now masks have kind of fallen out of fashion, even though COVID is not really that much better. It's still there in the background. People just stopped caring as much. And you don't have to wear a mask now if you don't want to. A lot of people have lifted their mask policy at this point, but you couldn't even make it that long. You couldn't make it a month, a month, okay? Do you have any idea how long I wore my mask? Up until like a week ago. I wore my mask for, God, Two years, maybe, to protect others. I wasn't worried about me. I'd already had COVID a couple of times, and I was fine. It sucked. I lost my sense of smell for a little while one time, and that was, that was a nightmare. But I survived. I'm young. I'm healthy. I wasn't worried about me. I wore a mask for the sake of other people. Your ass couldn't even do that to help others. It should show you, like, the deep selfishness inherent in these people's mindset, they can't do the, the most basic thing to help others. 
It's not even like it's a, an imposition on them. It was practically nothing, and they couldn't even do that. Problems are your problems. My problems are fucking my problems, you know? I'm sorry. It's not my job. You're pre-diabetic for me to run around the fucking grocery store knocking donuts out of your fucking mouth. And you're on your own. <laughs> I got you, pal. No, it's not your job. But you know what? If you want to be a part of society, then you have to protect society when we're dealing with a worldwide pandemic. You have to take basic steps to protect society. And if you don't want to take those basic steps, you don't have to be a part of society, i.e., you don't have to you know, go to the grocery store if you don't want to wear a mask. It's not like required. You can stay away from the grocery store if you don't want to follow their rules. If you don't want to wear a shirt at a grocery store, you don't have to. But you don't get to go inside. That's all. He's acting like a victim. I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means. <laughs> Traditional liberalism, you know, women's rights, gay rights. Gay rights, well, first of all, gay rights were the civil rights of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. They just were, you know? And this is the freest country. These are our neighbors, our brothers and sisters. These are people that deserve to be free in the freest country in the world. I mean, there was it's interesting to see what his position is on gay rights because a lot of Republicans of his caliber pretend that they like freedom but fucking hate gay people and are deeply, to the bottom of their heart, opposed to... You know, gay people having the right to just live their lives or get married or whatever. So we'll see how he feels about it. In the world, I mean, there was actually an anti... Yes. <laughs> there were anti-sodomy laws in 37 states. Like, get that out of your mouth you know, in, in America, you know? That's true. And there are actually still anti-sodomy laws in a lot of states right now. But there, it's illegal to enforce them because the Supreme Court decided in a case that was, I think it was tied to, God, I don't remember the name of the case, but it was tied to an overarching privacy case that was the foundations for interracial marriage and a bunch of other stuff. So anyways, yeah, the Supreme Court has expressed an interest in reversing those protections against people enforcing sodomy laws. By the way, Sodomy is any sexual act that is not intended to or is in or, or is incapable of producing a baby. So it's not just, you know, it's not just the one thing that you view it as. It's more than just that. Anyway, can we have a nutter butter scoring scale like one to ten? This guy's maybe a five. Oh, boy, that's a challenge. Hard to tell like where he falls on the scale because I have seen some really wacky people honestly some real wacky people but yeah maybe he's about a five maybe a seven out of ten you know what makes wait you know what masks also help allergies i wish it was normal to wear a mask when i was in high school i might have been there more and not in the hospital yeah a mask is pretty much a permanent part of my winter garb now i didn't realize how useful masks were in the winter time oh my god it's fantastic Lesbians weren't allowed to adopt in some states, you know, and, you know, people were being discriminated against by the basis of their sexual orientation, which was wrong. Luckily, they fought for these things and they got the big one. They got the big one. Gay marriage. And I, yeah, I'm not. Honestly surprised that people are clapping for this because gay marriage is very much disliked in the republican party which by the way is who is in the audience right now the republican uh, they're all republicans just about i don't know of a single person to the left of hunting the homeless for sport who would show up at an event like this and so only 41 percent i believe of the republican party is in favor of gay marriage which is down dramatically from what it was not, the, not even that long ago. They're attacking gay marriage right now. They being the Republican Party. Higher up Republican operatives. Ted Cruz. Well, not Ted Cruz as, as much, but, oh God. You know, Mitch McConnell and uh, whoever else. Just high profile Republican people are attacking gay marriage. Have been for a while now. I was always for gay marriage. 
complete, you know, I mean, if they want to be just as miserable as me, he's like, go for it, you know? <laughs> Look, if you are miserable in your marriage, then there's something wrong. Something is not quite right about the situation, and you should look into that, really. And don't tell me it's a joke, either, because jokes reflect reality most of the time. You can tell how somebody feels based on the jokes that they tell. When somebody se tells self-deprecating jokes, it's a sign for how they really feel in their heart about things. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk your ear off there. You feel like you were talking people's ear off if you make a joke like that, you know? Jokes are a light-hearted, easy way of telling people what you're thinking. So what was it that he said? Me, he was like, go for it, you know? <laughs> Oh, if you want to be as miserable as me, then go for it. It sounds like he's miserable in his marriage. I would not make a joke like that because I'm not miserable. If you are, you might consider getting out of it, right? Jump in. But I just think what happened was the gays won, thankfully, and they went to go live their lives in the freest country in the history of the world, but they left the door open a little bit and the crazy gay people snuck in. With, you know, all, with all the pronouns. And by the way, my pronouns are he and ha, just so everybody can start the he. Oh my God, dude. These people cannot, like, give up on the whole pronoun game. Roseanne gave a comedy special on Fox Nation just like this. And she said her pronouns were kiss and my ass. And, of course, that was, like, a direct rip-off from Ted Cruz's whole bit that he did. He said the exact same thing. I thought comedians weren't supposed to steal jokes. Anyway. At least he didn't steal pronouns, but this is kind of an obvious joke, right? Gay pride? Yeah. Gay pride day? I'm all for it. I will say, you know, gay pride... Month seems a little pushy, I mean, to be honest with you. It's a month, you know. Four weeks in a row, you know. A month. We only get 12, well, basically 11, because it's Gay Pride Month again after 11. You know. We get Veterans Day. A day, you know, Veterans Day. You fought for the country. Oh, it's over. Turn off the barbecue. Done. Sorry. No, no, no. Veterans Day. That's what you get. Yeah. Well, I mean... You can name anything, anything that you want, right? Like, didn't, uh, what, what was it? Um, isn't there like a white pride month or week or whatever? There are all, you know, anybody can name anything, anything that they want. There are no limits to that. And it's just a recognition that people have like struggled in society. Like that simple. Can you not acknowledge that fact? Is that too much for you? Is it wrong for you to acknowledge that people have suffered? Like, come on, man. Memorial. <laughs> Memorial. This is re really interesting, actually. So he says he's in favor of gay people having the right to do whatever they want, but he still found a method of attack despite that fact. So he knows his audience. He knows that this is a group of people who are naturally going to hate the gay community, by and large. You know, a lot of them aren't going to like gay people. So he's going to tell them his position, and then he's going to find a reason why he agrees with them. He's trying to find common ground with hateful extremists. Smart. Memorial weekend. Memorial weekend. Yep, that's it. Put the, oh, it's done. Sorry, it's Monday's over. Got to put the boat back on the truck. Let's go. Get the fuck out of here. Get out of the lake. It's over. Yeah, and Christmas only gets one day also, right? But how much celebration does Christmas get? I mean, are people only celebrating it for a single day? And what do they do when they're celebrating it? What, does, what do people do during Pride Month to celebrate Pride Month? Do they go out on a boat for an entire month and uh, sail around the way that people do for Memorial Day sometimes? Of course not. It's just a recognition of the problems that people have had in society. That's it. Nothing more. It's not like there's some, you know, it's not like it's like this massive event that takes place. It's just a recognition. That's it. Weekend over. 
We had President's Day. Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves. He kept the Union together. Gets a day. Yeah, and they have Black History Month also, right? Where you're supposed to talk about black history. Does, does he want to erase that too? Not I mean, there is no celebration for this stuff. You're not out there, you know, giving gifts to each other and stuff. It's just recognizing when something has happened or, or recognizing problems people have had in society or whatever and talking about it. That's it. In his own day, he has to share it with George Washington. He doesn't get a day either. And he founded the whole fucking country. But Washington has to share it with Lincoln. Dude, I don't know why he keeps making lewd jokes like this. I don't really find them terribly funny, and I'm probably going to have to cut them out. But, y you know, just bear in mind, he just made a lewd joke. I'm sure you can tell what it was by the fact that he's got his, he his hand on the back of his head and his... Yeah, we'll just leave it at that. You know, conservatives, you're freer, but you have to be careful. You can't just say whatever you think on Facebook. You get fired for that shit. If you have something crazy to say, like, men can't have babies, say it in person. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so there's some plausible deniability. Otherwise, like, I, I never said men can't have babies. I like my tech job. Yeah, I do. I, I do. And I said they can have a lot of babies, is what I actually said. <laughs> men can't have babies. I don't, I don't care what... I, I don't care. So again, this is just a culture war issue that these people cannot give up on. They are obsessed with it. The fact is, you can identify any way that you want to identify. As a human being, you have the right to control your identity and self-ascribe features. Oh, God. Did I just light this on fire? No. Okay, good. You can self-ascribe pieces of your identity. You can be anybody you want. Now, when you go to a doctor, you know, that you have to explain to that doctor what your medical situation is. That's totally reasonable. When you go, uh, but I, you know, I, I don't think I can think of a, a single scenario other than like a doctor's visit where it's necessary to explain your medical situation to anybody. And once again, why does this guy care? Why does he care? Like, why does he care what people identify as or how they act or who they are or whatever? I thought he was about freedom. What happened to all that freedom bullshit that he was talking about just a minute ago? Never cared about it in the first place. It was all about propagandizing the entire time. It was all about hating people that he doesn't like. Plain and simple. I don't care what they say. Oh, I feel something. It's a turd, okay? You can't. You can't. You can't. Take some Metamucil. This problem's gonna work its way out, okay? You're freer. But if you're a liberal, you're scared all the time because you never know when they're gonna go after you. Because you have to buy into all the ideology or you're out. You know? Two plus two equals four. Maybe. What? Maybe. What? No, 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 completely made up. That could be racist. What? No, I mean, you can have disagreements on various different things with the various different people. There's no problem with that. Nobody ever cared if you disagreed with this or that or whatever. What did the two say? Did the two say? You know who's under attack now? The L's, lesbians are under attack. Yeah, no, look it up later. No, if you're a lesbian and you refuse to date or have relations with someone who identifies as a lesbian, but has. <laughs> you are ridiculed online. Completely made up. This is not a problem. But again, he has to make something out of nothing. I don't care what online nutcases say. Do you realize that you can find an online nutcase that will say literally anything? You want to talk about online nutcases? Let's go through the online nutcases that I can find in favor of your movement, Rob. We're going to ignore the online nutcases and only talk about what people in positions of authority or 
you know, high amount of influence have to say about stuff. Now, the right is completely unglued from reality. And I'm talking people like Rob Schneider. I'm talking people that are part of his movement. Um, high up people. High up people in the movement. They are unglued from reality and absolutely insane. What are the high up people in the left wing movement saying about this stuff? Nothing. Because people can do what they want. It's none of your fucking business if somebody wants to identify as trans or whatever. Let them live their life. What happened to freedom? You are ridiculed online as a genital bigot. Yeah, I've never heard that term before. I have no idea what he's talking about. Sexual preferences are sexual preferences, and that's just what it is. You're not a bigot for liking this person over that person or whatever else. You, it, that's immutable. You can't change it. If you are a dude and you like guys, okay, you like guys. That's not sexist for not liking girls. Now, anybody that has any sense of reason would come to that conclusion, would, re would recognize that. But Rob Schneider wants to zero in on some lone nutcase he found on Twitter. Is this even real? I don't know. <laughs> a genital racist. It's like, what? Yeah, what? I've never heard that term before. Is anybody else? Leave the lesbians alone. <laughs> lesbians, lesbians got out of the whole male genitalia business a long fucking time ago. <laughs> they didn't want different genitalia. They wanted the same. <laughs> they want to be left alone with other lesbians to do the whole, you know. He's making a scissoring motion with his hands. That's kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'll give him that one. I think that was a funny joke. But yeah, I, I agree. And so does literally everybody else. Nobody cares what, you know, lesbians are doing or, or whatever as a whole. Like, let, let them do what they want. Nobody ever disagreed with that, Rob. He's making up. He's manufacturing this problem that does not exist. Never existed. Okay, fantastic. Thank you for just coming out and saying it, Rob. Now I have to do more censoring. God, whoever edits this, if it's me or my other editor, I'm gonna have. S we're gonna have so much work to do for this editing. I'm sorry. And I get it. Hey, look, I get it. I want to do the same thing. You know? Good traditional value Republican, right? This guy stands up for traditional values and. and rejects any progressive swearing, any type of language that could be offensive to other people. Yeah, good Republican guy we're listening to here. Can you imagine the lesbians having to deal with this kind of harassment? Can you imagine? Like, there is no harassment happening. You live in a fantasy land. Come on. <laughs> You're a lesbian. I identify as a lesbian. Let's just do what lesbians do. Come on. Yes. So much editing to do. I apologize to whoever edits this, which may be me apologizing to myself. This is just fabricated. All right, you should take a drink before this next fucking joke. I'm serious. <laughs> this is a tough one. Uh-oh. <laughs> Says the next joke is going to be bad. Here we go. 98% of all straight men. This is just painful, dude. He doesn't understand anything about how the left views anything at all or how normal people view anything at all. And he's just fabricating outrage out of like absolutely nothing seemingly. Like, it, this whole thing is built on a fake premise. Everything that he's saying here is made up, right? And as uh, Time Lord Iroh says here, conservatives have one joke and keep telling it for a full special. Pretty much. I mean, how long has he been on this trans issue? We're 34 minutes in, and he's spent a minimum of half that time talking about the same thing, the same tired thing. Come on, man. Move on. <laughs> First of all, this is all bullshit with the liberals and conservatives. This is the device they use 
to divide us. And so that's what that's all it is. Absolutely. You're correct. Trans panic is a device used to divide people, plain and simple. Nobody actually cares about any of this stuff. Nobody should care about people living their lives the way that they want to live it. Why do you care? Why are you zeroing in on this? Why is this the thing you've spoken about for the past 20 minutes? You get your first comedy special in, what, 30 years or something because Fox felt bad for you, the same way they felt bad for Roseanne. And what do you spend that entire comedy special doing? Shitting on people who, shitting on people who are different from you. Great job. Fantastic. Seriously, when there was, when there was a flood a couple of summers ago in Houston, Texas, and when the, they took the boats to go rescue people that were up on top of their homes, here's what they didn't say. Are you a Democrat or Republican up there? <laughs> Democrat? Well, that fucking boat's coming. Good luck with that one. <laughs> it's a kayak. It's better for the environment. I said, get in the boat. So, because we're all Americans, we help each other more down. And now I say that. Right, we're all Americans. That's, that's right. And this seems to be like a controversial position for the right. It's bizarre, man. I, just, I, and I, say, I voted for Trump in 2016. Ew. Let me explain. I know. For some people, that's an issue for some people. You know, I mean, first of all, you know, I was in, it was in California. And you know what? I can understand you getting suckered the first go around 2016. I, I, I don't see how, but OK, I still I think you're kind of dumb as dog shit if you did. But you know what? All right. You get fooled the first go around. If you voted for him in 2020, you're you're just a fool. You you fell for a con artist at that point. I, I don't know how else to interpret it. How could you possibly fall for somebody who is so very obviously a con artist after four years of him conning people? No excuses at it for the 2020 election. None. And, you know, um, I had I was right in the kitchen, uh, just right on my kitchen counter. I had the ballot, you know, you know, because in California, they mail you like a hundred of them. You, you get in there, you know? and was... No, they mail you how many they expect to be in the household. And then you have to fill out your address and your name and all of your stuff, which is used to verify that it's really you, because if you're not on the voter rolls, you can't vote. And then you put your signature down, which should match your signature that you put down when you originally registered. And if it doesn't, your ballot's rejected. It doesn't matter how many ballots you have, like at your house, you can print them out. It's irrelevant. You, your name needs to be on the voter rolls or they won't accept it. They're acting like this is like some way that people got around it so that they could vote multiple times. This did not happen. I was filling out, not all of them, I'm not an asshole, but I was filling out, you know, three or You couldn't possibly fill out all of them. You can't fill out more than one for your own name because it would trigger something in the system showing that you already voted and police would show up at your door and put you in prison for it. You know, there are people spending 10 years in jail right now for voting twice at this moment. There are people in jail who voted for their wife who had died the year before. Seriously. Four or five at the most, that's all. Trump, 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 Trump. Because here's the thing, I know the guy, you know? I don't know him well, but like, you know, I, you're, I'm the only person you're ever going to be in the same room with who made a movie with Donald Trump, you know? Home Alone, yeah. Uh, Home Alone 1, I think. Home Alone 2. Uh, Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, that's right. Now... We had to. I mean, Donald Trump showed up for like 15 seconds. The kid just walked up and asked for directions, and Trump said it, that way to the lobby and then was off screen. I think they even cut that scene out of the new releases or something like that. So. We had to put him in it. It was his hotel. <laughs> He's a big dude. He was just walking around in front of the camera like. Mm. We're like, maybe if we put him in it, he'll go away. And we did. And he did. 
So uh, if you notice on screen, this little up next thing popped up. Uh, it popped up originally when I first watched this. Uh, I didn't actually watch it through. I was just kind of scanning. I didn't. This is all new information to me, but this is literally not possible to get rid of, and this stays up for the remainder of the episode. Why did Fox Nation do that? You, your guess is as good as mine. But anyway, I didn't think much about that after. So anyway, a few years after that thing, I appeared with him on the... You remember when, like... Trump decided, I'm going to run for president, yeah, I'm going to run, and then he was going to do that, and then he didn't, you know, for a bunch of times. This is. Yep, yep, I, I remember that, and that's actually important to recognize. A lot of Trump nutcases don't want to recognize that. I mean, religious nutcases who believe he's the Messiah, and let me tell you why. There are some reasons why people believe he's the Messiah. One of the reasons why they believe he's the Messiah is because they believe that somebody prophesied that he would run for president. Kim Clement is the most famous one, but there's also Mark Taylor. There's a movie made about Mark Taylor. It's called The Firefighter Prophet. It was done by Liberty University. Anyways, Li Liberty University film students. So Mark Taylor in 2012 claimed that Donald Trump is going to run for president and he was going to win. And everyone's like, oh my God, that's four years before he actually ran. Except that Donald Trump was talking about running all the way back in 2008 or 9 or something like that, when Obama was first running. It's not a surprise to anybody that this dude would have guessed, taken a shot in the dark and assumed that Trump was eventually going to run because he had been talking about it this entire time. So people don't usually like to bring that fact up, that, that Trump was talking about it in 2012. It's interesting Rob Schneider admitted to that going to do that and they didn't you know for a bunch of times this is one of the times he didn't so i was on the tonight show and uh, with trump he was the first guest with jay leno and i'm backstage with jay and he said like you, you any jokes about uh, donald trump <laughs> hey, you know, I said, no, I don't, you know, nothing i want to say no you should say it you should just say it you know i think you know, he's making fun of jay leno he does have kind of an odd cadence but yeah you know, he's gonna know what's a joke. He's gonna know what's a joke. You know, we, we had some fun with that. Some fun. You know, it's some joke. <laughs> anyway, so we're doing the segment, and then Jay Leno sees there's some extra time, and he says, What was that story you were saying about that Trump back then? What, what are you saying? What was that about? Trying to push him into telling a joke about Trump. That's kind of funny. You fucker. You <laughs> fucked me. So then I had to say it, you know? I was like, well, you know, the difference between me and Donald Trump is, uh, when I got started, my daddy didn't give me $40 million. <laughs> That's good, I love it. That's fantastic. Absolutely on point. <laughs> I swear to God, Trump looked right at me and went like, That's not true, that's a lie. You're a liar, 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 you liar. It's not true, it's not true. It is true, actually. He just lied. I was like, whatever, you know. Anyway. So it was a few years after that, I don't know, five, seven, I don't know, ten years after, I, was go I went through a divorce and I was really depressed. And I wasn't leaving my house or anything. My publicist was worried about me. She said, listen, just get out of your house. Just go to this, just go to this event. They'll have your name. You'll have fun. Just, just, go. just, you need to get out. That's important. If you're feeling depressed, you need to get out. Get out of your environment, out of your situation. I anxiety, too. A lot of the time, they come hand in hand. If you're feeling anxiety or depression, get out of the situation. Change your environment in some way. It doesn't matter how. Just change it, whatever it happens to be. Uh, and I went to this place, and there's all these people and cars and shit, and there's cameras, you know, and I went up to the place and said, yeah, um, um, Rob Schneider. And she said, oh, yeah, yeah, here you go. And she handed me this thing. I said, Rob Schneider, judge. I said, what? What is this? It's the Miss USA pageant. And I'm a judge. Oh, my God. I think uh, Donald Trump runs, or at least ran, the Miss USA pageant, right? Judge. And you know who owns it? Donald Trump owns the whole fucking thing. Yeah, yeah. He famously ran Miss USA pageants and... According to some of the contestants in the pageant, Trump would 
randomly walk in. I'm talking little kids. They had a pageant for little kids. He would randomly walk in to the pageant grounds, to the pageant area, the dressing room area. And like while the the people, the, the girls were getting dressed because, you know, random inspection, make sure everything's going well. Seriously, uh, according to I mean, this is alleged. It's not proven to my knowledge, but that's the kind of thing Trump would do. And I don't put it past him at all. I can see that from Trump, honestly. You know how like rich guys with the rich, you know, they get like two homes, you know, in a boat or something, you know, if you're really, really, really rich, you get like a sports team or you know, for Donald Trump, it's like he really wants to be like with, you know, you know, this, you know whatever, you know what I'm saying? So we, I get my little thing and then they whisk me in the back room, you know, in the back room and Donald Trump comes in and he says, hey, listen, vote for whoever you want. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. Vote who you want. I don't care. I'm not going to tell you. You vote who you want. But, but, if you love your country, <laughs> like I love my country, if you love your, if, if you love your country, if you're a patriot, then you're going to vote for the blonde from Texas. Okay, that's kind of funny, actually. I like that. He's saying that Trump kind of swayed his vote in the Miss USA pageant. Okay. Then America can win Miss Universe. You want America to win, right? But vote who you want. <laughs> so I was like, fuck it, I'll vote for whoever you want. I didn't even know I was going to be here an hour ago, you know? So I got vote for, just, where do I fill it up? Can I go now, you know? And then, then we had to meet the contestants who came in. It's like, all right, we know who we're supposed to vote for. And then this other contestant came in, and she was the opposite of a blonde with big t She's the opposite of a blonde, the other spectrum, like over here, that. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, not so. And she came in and said, listen, I didn't even want to do this. I go, yeah? Yeah, I just like, you know, my friends told me I'm pretty and I should do it. Who knows? I might get lucky. I'm, I've got one year more of medical school. And if I win this, it's 100000 bucks. pay for medical school, become a doctor. And we're like, well, you know, let's give it to her, you know? I mean, it's like, it doesn't make us better people. I mean, you guys would have done the exact same thing. You would have done the exact same thing. You know, the blonde with the big she's going to find, you know, a Trump one. Well, she already did find Trump. She found the guy. Obviously, he found it. No, but... Okay, that, that, that's kind of funny. That's interesting what he's saying here. Eventually, the the woman is going to like find somebody to take care of her or whatever, right? Okay, that's really interesting what he's saying here. This girl who can actually help people in her life and you know, become a doctor. So we voted, and she won Miss USA. You know, and so they took us back after, and Donald Trump was not happy with the results of the vote. You don't love your country. You don't. You don't. You're a loser. 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 Now we're going to lose. We're going to lose to China. We're going to lose to China. China. This is actually good. I love it. He's making fun of Trump. I'm actually kind of surprised that he's making fun of Trump here. Loser. Thank you. I guess he wanted to say that he voted for Trump initially in 2016 so that he was more comfortable making fun of him. You don't love your country. You don't. I do. You don't. China. We're going to lose to China. So, <laughs> so I was walking out of there, you know, and I felt bad, you know. I felt bad, and I went up to him and I said, listen, Donald, I'm, I'm sorry that you didn't get the girl that, that you wanted. I know it seemed like it mean, meant a lot to you, and I'm sorry. But uh, Also, um, I'm sorry for that, that joke I said about you on, Le on Leno. And he looked at me and said, what joke? What, did he not remember that he got $40 million, or that he made a joke about him getting $40 million from his dad? It's not important. You know, you know I I.e., it wasn't a joke. He got the $40 million from his dad. He just didn't like that he was telling the truth about it. Wow, that's really interesting, actually. I love it. See, this is an example of Rob Schneider punching up not down somebody that's more powerful than him and he's calling him out for something that he did wrong basically that's that's actually really interesting no i like jokes what was the joke tell me the joke 
I, I assume Rob Schneider is trying to make the point that Donald Trump is creepy and weird sometimes. Well, you didn't like it the first time. You didn't. So. <laughs> I know. Tell me. It was just the differences, you know. From what? <laughs> between, between you and me. <laughs> Which is what? <laughs> My daddy didn't give me $40 million to start. <laughs> I swear to God, he looked right at me and said, I hate you now. I do. I hate you. I hate you. Loser. Loser. Like, you don't know if what he's saying here is true. So, yeah, I, I would love it if that story was real. That would be phenomenal. But you never know for sure if the stories that he tells are real or not. So take it with a grain of salt, but that, that's good. I like that. China, I hate you, loser. And I was like, whatever. It's not like you're ever gonna be president of the United States. <laughs> that's funny. That's a good one, right? I love it. <laughs> If Joe Biden was a dog, you'd put him down. Do it after. You know. No, so I guess he felt like he needed to say so he made a joke about Trump, which should be perfectly acceptable. You know, honestly, it should be perfectly acceptable to make jokes about Joe Biden too. anybody. I don't feel that anybody is above making jokes about, but you shouldn't be saying things just to hurt them intentionally and for no other reason than that. Right. What was the point of him saying if Joe Biden was a dog, you, should, you would put him down? Why did he say something like that? That wasn't a joke. That wasn't funny. I mean, he told a funny joke about Trump and imitated his like mannerisms and everything. That was funny. What was funny about saying you'd put Joe Biden down if he was a dog? Like, if he tells a legitimate joke about Biden, I will laugh at it. An honest joke. But what he said so far is not funny. It's just mean. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know those dogs that are so old and fucked up they just look at you like please kill me please please kill me no look at this eye snot please kill me look I just shit on my own food bowl an hour ago what more information do you need please kill me kill me like, this is also kind of a dark subject anyways, that, you know, you have to put dogs down sometimes. That's s sad. You know, people don't revel that fact that they have to deal with something so heartbreaking as putting down a, m really a member of the family, right? And on top of that, he's kind of reinforcing a trope about Biden that he's old and his mind is gone and he just needs to die. Like, he didn't joke about Trump dying. If he had joked about Trump dying, I would have a problem with that. We're all in this together. <laughs> Sorry, it's a joke. So cut to 2016, back in the kitchen, you know, where I'm voting, and my wife comes in. Should vote for Donald Trump? Uh-oh. 17 times you vote for him? <laughs> Do you know your wife is a Mexicana? You can't vote for somebody more than once. You have to put your name and address down and your signature, and those things have to match your information in the voter rolls when you registered to vote. When you register, you have to have proof of identity, proof of citizenship, and everything else. It's not just something you can walk in and do without, you know without any evidence of anything at all. But, okay. Your daughters are Mexicanas. Your family's from Mexico. You vote for him? Then you're racist too. I'll never look at you the same way again, ever. I swear to God, four years later, my wife's like, fuck, I can't believe it, but I'm voting for Trump. Holy shit, let me tell you. So he's saying that she was brainwashed, okay. I don't know. I mean, he called Mexicans rapists, right? I, like, I don't know what could possibly 
drive a Mexican person to vote for Trump. He hates you. How else can he make this clearer? He does not like you, especially if you're black. You know that you may not remember this because, you know, you weren't around back then. I wasn't around at this time either, but I know a lot about Donald Trump. Back in the, I think the 80s, maybe? Donald, no, no, no. Uh, maybe it was the 50s or, no. Maybe it was the 60s or 70s. I don't know. Anyways, Richard Nixon's administration, that's a Republican right-wing nutcase administration, corrupt as it gets, investigated Donald Trump because he was rejecting black applicants from renting apartments from him. He was refusing to allow black people to rent an apartment from him. And the far-right Richard Nixon administration called him on it and sued him for it, I think. And he, like, he got in all kinds of trouble for it. Donald Trump is a racist and has been a racist since day one. Just look at his track record. Look at the wake of lawsuits that he's left in his path for evidence. He has always hated people that were not the same ethnicity as him, basically. And I, I honestly cannot believe he suckered any black person or Mexican or Asian or anybody that's not white into voting for him. It blows me away anybody would vote for the guy who was not like a white supremacist, basically. I am not a person who menstruates. I'm a woman. I'm a mujer. Pinche bendejes. I think we're all still recovering from post-traumatic scamdemic syndrome. Scamdemic syndrome, he says. Okay. By the way, the Chinese are trying to kill us. They are. Forget about COVID. Forget about that. They've been trying to kill us since the 70s. Remember Kung Pao Chicken? How spicy that shit was, remember? <laughs> yeah, they're trying to kill us. Yeah, it was scary. You know, because we didn't know what was happening in the beginning. You know, it was like, it's, it's just killing old people. We're good, we're good. Mm, I, I don't, who is he including in this we equation? I wasn't saying it's just killing old people, we're good. Who the hell is he talking about? Is that how he felt? And then you look at your phone, like, no, it's just killing people who are really, really out of shape. That's not true, though, first of all. And second, so? It's killing people! Are you kidding me? You really don't seem to care about this? Really? You know, human life is the most precious and valuable thing in the universe. In the universe. And this guy wants it. Oh, a baked golden apple. I didn't know you could do that. And this guy doesn't seem to care about human life. Something going wrong, something not quite right in the brains of people who don't seem to care about human life like that. Wait, I'm really, really out of shape. <laughs> Wait a minute. This guy's parachute didn't open and he died of COVID. Okay, now he's making jokes about the measuring or the measurement methods that were used to determine how many people had died from COVID, falsely claiming that the CDC was incorrectly counting deaths and that is way, way, way less than it actually was. Now, the CDC actually did change the way that they count deaths not too long ago, but we still have millions of deaths, despite the fact that they changed the way they're counted to honestly match a little bit more closely with what these people would want. It's still millions of people that are gone, no matter what, even under your calculations. You're okay with that? Really? What is wrong with somebody who would say it's okay for millions of people to die? I'm perfectly fine with it. And not only am I fine with it, I'm going to refuse to take the most basic step of wearing a mask. What is wrong with him? <laughs> No, that's not what's happening. Uh, so he says this guy's parachute didn't open. He and he had COVID. He must have died from COVID. That's inaccurate. Um, it's basically anybody who died within a certain period of time of getting COVID, 
that wasn't from an obvious thing, like that wasn't from a car crash or something, was counted as a COVID death because COVID played a part in it. So if somebody gets COVID and then they get pneumonia and then they die, that like shortly thereafter, it counts as a COVID death because COVID contributed to it, right? They wouldn't have died if they didn't get COVID. Now, it may not have been COVID specifically that killed them, but they died because of COVID effectively. And that that number used to be within 60 days of getting COVID and eventually turned to 30 days. They changed it to be 30 days. And actually, even under the 60-day rule, we were still undercounting because we can compare the number of deaths that the U.S. suffered in 2019 or 2018 or whatever. We can look at how many people died those years and compare it to how many died in 2020, 21, 22, and see that it's dramatically higher than it used to be. Dramatically. There's no explanation for how it's so insanely high immediately after COVID appears. COVID deaths were undercounted, not overcounted. But okay, let's keep propagandizing. Maybe that's how you get it. You know, you're falling, you're breathing all that shit in. <laughs> you see, when you're, in a, when you're in a place of fear, you're, you know, your common sense takes a back seat because your most primal instinct is survival. Exactly. That's why you have to listen to scientists who know what they're talking about, are well-informed and qualified to give advice. Instead of l- listening to idiots who have no clue what they're talking about, right? And the scientists were telling us we should lock down for a short period of time and we should wear masks everywhere we go for a little bit. Lockdown saved 3 million lives. Masks saved about 100,000, somewhere in that vicinity. And this guy complained about both of them from the very beginning. Please, get over yourself. Your common sense takes a back seat. That's how they were able to get away with this one. We're very lucky. Who is they? They were able to get away with this one? What? We have a selective virus. <laughs> very lucky. Selective. You want to go to the gym? Dead. <laughs> Haircut? Dead. Nails done? Dead. Church? Dead. Well, we didn't know anything about the virus at the time. We needed to be extremely careful until scientists learned more about it, and that's perfectly reasonable. Eventually, we learned that it was probably safe to get, like, a haircut if we wore masks and stuff like that and to try to limit it to a lower frequency, if at all possible, and people did. And guess what? It saved lives, not having people around each other as often. You know what else saved lives? The hair cutty guy spreading out the appointment so there weren't 16 people sitting in his office waiting. You know, schedule it so one single person can come over at a time and that will limit how many people are catching it, basically, right? But this guy, Rob Schneider, didn't even want that, seemingly. He didn't even want people to... He didn't want people to take the most basic steps. He just wanted people to, you know, just open it wide open, walk in, do whatever you want, pay zero attention to COVID, despite the fact that we've already had 1.3 million deaths and lockdown saved another 3 million people. Doesn't matter. Fuck it. You want to go to Target or Walmart? Come on in. You're good. Let's go. Come on. You're good. Well, Target and Walmart were necessary. See, that's the difference. He's saying you didn't go to church or you weren't allowed to go to church, but you could go to Target or Walmart. Yeah. You know why? Target and Walmart sell necessities, things people need to stay alive. Church, on the other hand, you can do online. You don't have to show up in person to take part in a church service. See how that works? Logic goes right out the window because he doesn't care. Because he he refuses to accept that it was real. He wants to believe that it was all a conspiracy and they were out to get you. Seriously. Come back to reality with the rest of us, Rob, please. Come on in. The virus knows you need some shit. <laughs> Standing up at a restaurant, dead! <laughs> Sit down at a restaurant, the virus will go right over your fucking head. Right over your head. <laughs> you feel that, honey? That was the virus going over the head. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's just made up. He's just coming up with 
hilarious jokes, quote unquote, to try to make it out as though, vi you know, COVID was irrelevant and people shouldn't have cared. Yeah, we're sitting down. You respect us. I thought the most interesting thing that happened during the pandemic was right in the middle when we weren't sure what was happening, you know, this is a real, you know, virus, you know, or this is the biggest transfer of wealth in human history. We weren't fucking sure it was going to happen. Well, it was both. It was a, a huge pandemic that was affecting the entire world. And it was also a, a massive transfer of wealth. So, yeah, there's that. But OK, apparently in his mind, it can only be one or the other. This is just sad. I mean, let me know what you think in the comments about Rob Schneider. He cannot give up on this COVID stuff. All these years later, he still wants to pretend that it's some grand conspiracy.